in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall you welcome to another spirit filled message on christocentric message if you're new to this channel i would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well i would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you your graces are going to be imparted onto you and then god is going to visit your home thank you for watching stay blessed I've heard me say it in my teachings that the Lord told me he said son if you will let men see me there is nothing I will not give you as at the time God told me that thing I didn't have anything oh, ladies and gentlemen nothing but I said even if you never give me anything my life is committed to revealing you do you love him more than your business don't just say yes because God likes this kind of questions he will test it do you love him if God asks you to shut your business for one month you know how much you make per day and God says for me shut it down and spend one month will you bind and cast that voice and say God cannot speak like this not after what he knows happened to me last year the jealousy of God demands that he becomes the epicenter of your Christian experience. Not one of the many important things. Please listen carefully. God demands that he becomes the epicenter of your experience. May God forgive me if I'm lying. But I've searched my life. Huh? I do not know if there is anything in my life today that I cannot give God. Like I said... It is by God's grace and mercy. But as far as I know, no. And you won't believe how many things I've laid down to speak like this. When you see God doing great things with men, remember this, this, this minister's conference is to show you the inner workings of the results you see. You don't just stand and say God's power is going to touch somebody. You are not a herbalist. Even a herbalist, go and ask them. They have levels. There are herbalists that are failures. It doesn't mean that just because you are serving the devil, you are successful. It's still the same rule of, of consecration and depth. Herbalists are in levels. There are those that, that you go to and it will still not work because they don't even know the devil. Are we together now? So just because it is Satan you are serving does not guarantee results. No. You need to know the devil deep enough. It still takes this relationship we are talking about. I have searched and searched all the earth. Searched and searched all the earth and found that Babu Wani Kamaraka. I have searched and searched all the earth, searched and searched all the earth, and found that Babu Wani Kamaraka. This song came to me early in the morning. I was in Cameroon and just worshiping the Lord very early in the morning, celebrating His greatness. And then this song came to my spirit. The house part says there is no one like you. That's what it means. I have searched. It took a long search to come to the conclusion that no one is worth my life. So don't tell me why are you so fanatical. I searched. I'm, I, I, my loyalty to God is not in ignorance. I have options but I checked. He is my loving him is a conclusion now you understand that I have searched and searched all the earth searched and searched all the earth and found that Baba Wani Kamaraka I have searched and searched
searched all the earth, searched and searched all the earth, and found that Mamu and Guess what the chorus says? I will love him in life and I will love him in death. Call me CEO. I am still the lover of God. Call me a businessman. I am still the lover of God. Call me an apostle and a prophet. The noblest title you can give me is the lover of God. For that is the realm where no eye has seen. That is the realm where no ear has heard. Neither has it come into the comprehension of men. What God has in store. Not for them that preach. Not for them that do business. Not even for them that pray. The realm of lovers is the realm of, of a, a, a height that you cannot understand. Yes. Hear me. This morning service came to turn you from a businessman to a lover of God from a man of God or a pastor to a lover of God if this is all I achieve and we are not able to touch any other thing within the time left it was a successful thing my assignment this morning or afternoon is not just to come and share with you leadership principles you belong to an excellent church don't tell me you are a CEO. Leave the issue of your container. Are you a lover of God? Leave the issue of your restaurant. Congratulations. Are you a lover of God? Leave the issue of the church that you have. For a minute, forget about your congregation and your desire to build your church and your desire for more land and your desire to find him. No, no, no. Throw all that away. searched and searched all the earth searched and searched all the earth and found that Babuani Kamaraka I have searched and searched all the earth searched and searched all the earth and found that Babuani he said, bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not his benefits. Hear me? Most of us, as you are hearing me preach, you need to repent. Because most of us would prefer to be called the CEO of XYZ conglomerate than to be called the lover of God. It looks like an insult. What a demeaning title. Give me something more superior that gives me a standing among my peers. For instance, he owns five conglomerates. He owns this and that. He's a billionaire. He's an intelligent person. Noble descriptions. But nothing comes close to the realm of love because when everything failed, it was love that stood. When wisdom failed, love was still standing. Even when faith failed, love was still standing. Listen to me, ladies and gentlemen, your leadership will be an ineffective leadership. God will not even give you an opportunity to scale the heights of influence until he knows that you love him and you are passionately addicted and connected to him if I ever give you any secret about my life and the privilege of the bit that God is doing with this man this is it here it is beyond the realm of prayer it is beyond the realm of fasting it is beyond the realm of Bible study go and ask God how much I love him and you will know why he does what he does now please listen when the first lady is not around here but yesterday when your pastor finished introducing anybody everybody even though she's far away thousands of kilometers 
he still took the time to not even the man of God who came to preach made him forget his wife not even the dignitaries that came made him to forget his wife he had to honor her and you celebrated her there are some people eh? it doesn't matter where they are the jealousy of God keeps trailing them like a shadow because of the depth of their love for him so while they are sleeping someone is planning that this man and his children they should not live to survive the end of 2022 God will not even allow you start praying about it he takes that issue personal who did you say you want to kill did the Bible not say jealousy is the rage of a man you want to know how angry a man can be you touch his wife most of us have not been able to secure the jealousy of heaven because your love for God is still in question can I tell you only God knows the arrows that fly by day against some of us the noisome pestilence it is only when we get to heaven we will know the amount of things we have eaten that are poisons that should have killed us no matter how intelligent you are we see impact as far as the world of men is concerned when men want to get you only God can save you so if you are standing it's because there's something about your love listen to me any container that replaces God in your life is an idol I don't care if it's Bibles that are inside them. anything that replaces God your business the things you are importing and exporting the restaurants that you have the leadership man of God do you know church can become an idol don't think just because it's a spiritual venture church can become an idol you don't care whether God is there or not your relationship with God can go places provided this the religiosity of the activities there do you love him don't think God is wasting your time this morning do you love him many of you have given your heart to people of lesser honor you gave your heart freely for people whose lives you did not even verify and here is someone who has assured you that he loves you and you are still asking questions can I trust you with my heart please hear me there are realms of increase there are realms of finances I wish sometimes my heart boils to want to give a few testimonies but sometimes even when I give them I listen to the message I still feel guilty again I say I shouldn't have said that I should have just preached I cannot begin to tell you the things that God has done in this life purely a love affair when a man buys something and takes to his wife it's not her birthday it's not any anniversary it's not whatever he just buys a car and gives his wife and she says my husband what is this for he said thank you for being my wife you can stand in anger and say but this is not fair well that's the blessing of taking the risk to be his wife so when you see a man love the Lord like a faithful bride don't say why is God blessing this person I can't remember him praying over this thing why did God still answer because in the realm of lovers anything is allowed God can take a man's prayer request of 10 years and give you you can see a man hosting dimensions of grace and glory that does not seem to match your knowledge of him it is the lover who gave him not just the giver a giver can give but when a lover gives he gives to reflect his love are we together I can give you 10 naira as a giver but when a husband gives to his wife he does not give sparing because the gift is supposed to communicate how much he loves her after this meeting you see some of you will go back and the things God begins to do in your life in addition to what you learned yesterday people will ask you and say come what is it about you tell them you want to know why God does the things that he does find out my love for him don't just find out my service for him find out my love 
not just my money not just the things that I do my love for him I've seen what God can do look I have a lot of these my wonderful children and both in Abuja and then Zaria and sometimes when I travel and I'm with them after service that's when their own church starts all they jump in they pray in tongues and do whatever as soon as they say the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ they are lining up and waiting to hug me and when they come to hug me they don't care whether I'm tired they don't care whether I've preached that is their own service and they hug and sometimes they ask me to bring my ears down can you imagine that that's the implication of love I bring my ears down and they tell me I want bicycle or with confidence or my birthdays next week sometimes they write me letters they mix all kinds of English and force me to read it that that is how far love can go so two of you can do the same thing it will look like God spares one and the other one is still remaining there because love created exemption for another please hear me return back to your love life any business any church any ministry some of you may need to shut down a few ministrations and say thank god for all the invites church is growing but i need to shut down a bit and spend that time with him and say the lover of my soul i am still here that boy you carried is still there i know today they call me daddy they call me emoji they call me prophet they call me apostle they call me evangelist but i have come to you and God says, you still remember. Even after all this lifting, prepare for the next level. I just described myself for you. Prepare for the next level. So that when you think you have exhausted these people, oh, they've tried. You see a new layer of glory and grace. And signed upon their life will be the lover of their soul. Hallelujah. We are going to pray. I have about 20 minutes. I will talk about something within that 20 minutes. We are going to judiciously use our time. But for the next three or four minutes, you are going to cry. Whether you want to go on your knees, whether you want to do whatever, you are going to say, Lord, forgive me. If I am to be sincere, I know that certain things have replaced you. It may not be that you are bad. I'm not. This is not a call to condemnation. It's a call to repentance. To say, Lord, you don't have to go on your knees or what, but whatever position is comfortable, we are going to pray. 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 Adonai, Lamb of God, you are worthy, worthy of my praise. King of kings, Lord of lords, let your kingdom reign in my life. I love you, Lord, and I lift my voice to worship you. Oh, my soul, rejoice, take joy, my King, in what you hear. Help me. May it be a sweet, sweet sound in your ear. Oh. Lord, I return. I don't know when the passion for ministry took your place. I didn't even realize that this is how far I veered off. Ah, cry, 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 cry.
try belong to you total surrender my heart my life my everything you're not wasting your time man of God this is the secret to genuine power more than just principles your experience with God for some of you you need to repent you have been distracted you veered off looking for many things minutes we are praying there is a work of purging that God is doing in someone's life purging God is purging God is purging how I love 
to stand for you how I love to worship you keep praying and even though it hurts me for every step I take and even though it pains me for every move I make but I love you I can never ever do without you I love you I can never ever do without you I love you I can never ever do without you I love you I'm giving you a piece of my secret place. Hoganedo. is not of God. Let the fire from your altar Let the fire from your altar touch While you are worshipping God is sorting your business. While you are worshiping, God is arranging things for you. While you are worshiping, God is arranging the people who will come and sow the land for the church. Forget about the sorrow.
Go ahead, something is happening here. My voice lifted up. I will sing your praise. My hands lifted up. I will worship you. You've taken the pain and the sorrow away. You've given me peace on deny There's no need to cry because you're always with me. You're my father, my everything. Lord, you took my pain away and then you gave me joy. You're my peace, my melody in the center of the score. You gave me a brand new song to sing to you. That's why I will lift up my voice. Come on, sing to him. Yeah, yeah. Command a restoration of your passion for God. A restoration of your passion. For some of you, after this conference, you will start your own retreat with God. Because God is calling you. You may need to shut down. Even in the secular, we have public holidays where you shut down things. So that you can face family or honor a national day or whatever it is. God is calling you man of god by now you would have been a mighty prophet by now your business would have gone around the world but you have been searching for every other thing and you ignore the lover of your soul get back to the place of the altar leave me at the altar with my father leave me at the altar with my father Leave me at the altar with my father. Listen, you see, until you understand the place of genuine love, it is the one secret I found. And when I found it, it was a master secret. Love. Oh, I love him. I love him. I love him. I can tell you that. You want to see God prosper you? Second Chronicles 26 5. For as long as he sought the Lord, the Lord made him. You can try to make yourself vain is the help of man. The Lord made him to be the leading man of God within his city. The Lord made him, the Lord made her, the Lord made your products that for all of a sudden within one month. Your product is what is being patronized all over Enugu. And people are saying by what means a covenant happened. If, if a gentleman comes here right now and by evening he returns back and tells you he's a billionaire, you will not tell him what did you do. You will say where did you go? Because this kind of wealth is not about what you have done again. There, there has to be a covenant that has produced this kind of speed. We are talking of soaring. Some of you have lingered too long. That is where anger and jealousy and pain and petty things come from. You can allow the lover to lift you. And you will find yourself soaring in dimensions you never imagined. This is my life. Sit down for five minutes. 
let me introduce something to you and then we'll wrap up just leave those under the anointing leave them to have their time with God the conference is like a retreat for some of you to love you help us to live for you may we never match you with business may we never match you with church no. may we never match you with anointing prayer is not God prayer is only there because there is God fasting is not God fasting is only necessary because there is God Bible study is not God God is not a page. He's alive. All and everything points to him. And when your life fails and ceases to point to him, you are then in trouble. Let me introduce just one more concept. Proverbs chapter 13 verse 20 I touch on this and we're done I spoke about the depth and the richness of your experience with God Proverbs 13 13 and verse 20 just one last word 13 and 20 please give it to us 1 3 and 2 0 Proverbs 13 and verse 20 Let's read together if you can see it. Ready? One to read. He that walketh with wise men shall be wise, but a companion of fools shall be destroyed. Please read it one more time. He that walketh with wise men shall be wise, but a companion of fools. The Bible tells us very clearly from Psalm 115 and verse 16, I believe Psalm 115 and verse 16. It says the highest heavens or the heaven of heavens belong to the Lord, but the earth has he given to the children of men. That means when it has to do with functioning in the earth, the cosmos, this is the world of men, even though owned by God listen carefully if you do not understand this your leadership will fail i just needed to introduce this even though the earth is the lord's listen carefully the steward of the earth is man the owner of the earth is the lord's that means for you to excel in life you must know both the owner and the steward are we together now yes most of us here rent houses and usually you don't have the privilege of seeing the owner or knowing the owner except in a few instances there usually is someone between the owner and the tenant called the caretaker is that true and the caretaker has been mandated by the owner to protect his interest as far as that business is concerned am i correct on that so it is the 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 caretaker who does all the negotiations the paperwork and whatever it is and the overseas and then there is a care the earth that we function in belongs to the Lord, Psalm 24. But Psalm 115 is saying the stewardship of the earth is in the hands of man. That means whatever happens in the earth is not a reflection of the power of God. It's a reflection of the faithful stewardship or the mismanagement of that caretaker. If you do not have this wisdom understanding about the cosmos, you can be spiritual and you will still fail. This world is the world of men. Hallelujah. When God put man in the garden, he gave him stewardship. And even when he saw him failing, he still honored his decision. That is how faithful God is. That means it is possible for God to speak excellent things over your life, your church, your business, your state. And yet you do not see God manifest on that wise because we do not understand the dynamics of excelling in the cosmos every time I talk to leaders 
if I have one thing to teach them is this understanding of men yesterday we began to discuss and our time is gone so I'm just going to touch it and then we're done on being helped by God and I did teach you that there are three expressions of the help of God number one is the ministry of mercy number two is the gift of man that means every time God wants to help an individual and help a leader he introduces you to man the Bible says what is man that thou art mindful of not the son of man that thou visitest him you find that in Psalm 8 it says for thou has made him lower than Elohim you have crowned him with glory and unrective to Psalm 8 and it says you have set him over the works of hands and in doing so you did not leave anything that was not under his feet you have to appreciate that mankind listen carefully the human species is the zenith of God's creation that means God bound himself with a covenant that every time he has to function in the earth he will need a man to walk in partnership with him he can do without a man but he has so chosen by his predeterminate counsel to not walk outside of men so the world is the world of men I don't have time I would have described for you the condition to be a man because to be a man you first have to be a spirit if you are not a spirit you cannot be a man are we together now every man is first a spirit but a spirit alone cannot be called man you have to be a spirit that is hosted in a physical body there are all kinds of bodies but the only body that makes an individual to be called man is a physical body and then midwifing that spirit and that body is your mental faculty okay. thank you are we together now yes so there are many spirits angels cannot be called men they are spirits but they do not have our bodies with our, our our configuration is not given to them animals have physical bodies but they do not have spirits you cannot call animals men you need to understand who God gave the earth to God did not give the earth to goats or whatever it is water is physical but you cannot call water man even though water moves like man you can hear the sound like man so when it has to do with excelling in the earth if you understand your business and you do not understand men you will fail the first product you need to understand is man second only to your understanding of God the moment you understand God as far as leadership and influence and excellence is concerned you must understand every trouble on earth today came because of man the salvation that we have received came from a man the man called Jesus hmm. are we together the one who purchased salvation for us he did not purchase salvation as a spirit no he had to become a man to come and die as a man man and is today seated at the right hand of the father as a man the reason why we know Jesus is coming is because he left with his body he doesn't need another body to return the assurance of his coming is because when he left he left with his body so he has satisfied the condition that still gives him allowance into the world of men the first time he could not just come because he never had a physical body so he needed to go through the labor of finding a virgin waiting for a virgin and then you know being incubated in a stomach for nine months but this time around he can come anytime because he does not need a body again now watch this everything that happens on earth happens through men you may have heard me teach that all blessings come from God through men to men all troubles come from Satan through men 
to men because of the presence of men societies are destroyed because of the presence of men evangelism happens because of the presence of men leadership happens territorially speaking because of the presence of men the reason why some nations are called third world and others are called first world is because of men it's not the seas that make them first world or or whatever it is the battle on earth today is for the hearts and the minds of men i hope you know the battle on earth is not for gold the battle on earth is not for oil listen the battle on earth is not even for territory the greatest battle on earth is who captures the hearts and the minds of men the reason why your bank is functioning right now is because of men the reason why you want to build a business right now is because there are men in enugu if you leave enugu with goats alone and you are the only human being even if the banks and the oils and everything are left you cannot do business are you seeing that everything literally happens because of men isn't it interesting that everything happens because of men and yet most people learn every other thing but man they do not know about men but they know about business they open a school why are you opening schools because you know people will keep giving back and their children will go to school your business literally is founded on that philosophy that the presence of men guarantees the continuity of your business some of you who have stores here if alone because there are humans and even when you cut the hair it will still grow back you cut it you literally build a business around that information why does your rest of men it is men that eat the meal and they will go to toilet and then return back again so if they buy your pack your bag of rice today you tell him see you next time that statement is predicated on the information that you are a man there is something about you that my business is built upon. Imagine if we ate once and never had to eat again. Farming will be useless. Manufacturing will be useless. Production will be useless. It is because you know that someday this cloth I am wearing is going to go through wear and tear. You literally, based on that information, you built a business around it. In one word, business is the ministry of men listen carefully please don't think i don't know what i'm saying business is not the ministry of bottles business is not the ministry of containers business is not the ministry of cars business is not the ministry of schools business is the ministry of men every other product that you call business is only a midwife the final consumer is a man so if you know your product and you do not know the man the reason why you clean your chairs very early in the morning those who clean this beautiful church when you came here early in the morning probably there was no one or maybe a few people and yet you had the confidence to set the stage because you knew that men will come imagine if you saw cows just coming maybe 30 of them would you say you are welcome god bless you find a place to sit no cows are physical things but that's not what you are looking for men Any leader who does not understand men is going to fail as a pastor as a businessman the reason why most of us do not excel in our influence and our leadership is because we took our time to study any other thing and every other thing and we ignored men the zenith of God's creation if God is going to lift you it will come through men relationships are the most expensive commodities on earth relation expensive people will pride and say i'm using a a rolex watch i bought it five million naira and look at it has diamond crested in it and yet they do not know that relationships are of inestimable value you are i always pray for my people and let me extend that prayer for you may you never be so poor that the only thing you have is money 
may you never be so poor that the only thing you have is money because if the only thing you have are notes in your house you are not wealthy the real honor of a man is not in his acquisitions the bible says it means your relationships represent the highest index of your wealth the degree to which you are connected to strategic relationships that provide a leverage to your destiny is the measure of your wealth money only comes to you through relationships it will take a hand exchanging to bring wealth to you now please listen if you do not understand this you will fail in life destiny fulfillment is impossible without relationships i am here right now in this lovely church because of a relationship a relationship that started in nairobi kenya but has been maintained so greatly relationships as busy as i am there are people who if they demand my attention i will respond almost instantly because of the power of relationships there are people today who did not have to do much in terms of business they invested diligently in their relationships and their relation they did not even start as business people they started as wise people because they worked with the wise and the end of their pursuit was a business and influence politicians understand this you find out somebody who never had the intention to be a governor or a senator he only followed wise people and as he followed wise people he started evolving to a version of himself that you now call a leader jesus said follow me and i will make you he never gave them any promise that you'll be called apostles he never gave them any promise that you'll be miracle workers he said follow me and i will make you through that relationship he produced those we call apostles who turned the world upside down listen to me relationships are currencies they can buy anything money can buy anything money can buy relationships can buy the easiest way to succeed in life is through relationships and destiny connections you may have heard me say it in my teaching that who hates you does not matter but who likes you matters truly who likes you matters there are people who can make things happen for others because of the strength of relationships i know people who got jobs after praying for jobs for three five six years in less than one hour one relationship brought the job for them i know people who got land to build a church there is no true story of success that is not connected to relationships the anointing that a man receives in his life is based on relationships we just graduated our school of ministry students on sunday glorious program and while i was praying for these people i was looking at them and my heart reached for compassion i said look at what relationships can do there are people who have no business being wealthy except that they were around wealthy people and it became unfair for them to remain in that state there are people who had no business being anointed but they were around anointed people and it became unfair for them to remain at that level if i see where you are it is a reflection of your relationships he that walks with the wise shall be wise himself but a companion of fools shall be destroyed the man does not want to be destroyed but he's associated with people who are vulnerable to destruction and the end of it is that person is destroyed himself he that walks with the wealthy shall be wealthy he that walks with the anointed shall be anointed he that walks with intelligent people shall be intelligent he that walks with the godly shall be godly that means anything you want to become find those who already are that is your chance of becoming it you want to become a man of god doing ministry with the dignity of kingdom integrity you cannot have that hanging around people who compromises like their second name they don't have any regard for other and spiritual things you want to become someone of character a great leader and a visionary man there are people who are great people but all their friends are drunkards all their friends are unserious people and then they say it doesn't matter i'm not like them yet 
you are not like them yet you are on your way becoming a child does not know he's a child till he becomes an adult is when the child becomes an adult he say oh i once was a child so the drunkard does not know he's becoming a drunkard till he turns later on and finds out that oh i'm only doing five now listen to me most people have not learned the power of protecting their destinies by surrounding themselves with quality godly people you may have heard me say in my teachings, if there are five foolish people around you, you didn't count well, there are six. If there are five prayer warriors around you, you did not count well, there are six. If there are five visionary people around you, you did not count well, there are six. You are always a reflection of the company that you keep even in business come on i'm in the east here and you know there are times that you pass a street that sell electronics there are 10 shops all selling the same thing and you would think because of the presence of one they will fail and yet they will all succeed because sometimes you will not find a product in one place and the other one will lead you to another shop where you will get it and he's still happy that you got it because you will come back for their sake please hear me leaders if you are to live a qualitative destiny in this end time go ahead to begin to select quality people you must understand the power of men and how to relate with men if you do so if you do not understand relationships you can be anointed and you will be surprised that your work will remain small businessman you may never be able to scale heights and go global it takes more than being anointed the gift of men is one of the ways that God helps men to soar. Are we together? There are many things you need to know about men. You need to understand the vulnerabilities of men. You need to understand the inconsistencies of men. You need to also understand the different kinds of men we have in our world. You have to understand the kinds of relationships that are available. For instance, there are general relationships. The Bible mandates that we treat everyone with love and caution. You go out in the morning and you meet people. General relationships. There are seasonal relationships. Relationships that come to your life for a season. The key to maximizing those relationships is discernment. To receive what they have to deliver to you fast before their expiry time. Then there are covenant or destiny relationships. These are relationships that connect directly, not just to where you are going, but the final journey. No matter what you need to do, you have to protect those relationships. For instance, your relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. It can be a general relationship. It can be a seasonal relationship. Your relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ is not even a covenant relationship. It is your life. That means whatever goes wrong in that relationship, you have to humble yourself and swallow your pride and press. Most people do not understand the power of relationships. We keep receiving prophetic words, but relationships destroy our potential for growth and scaling heights. I want to make a statement and then I wrap up. Our father, Dadio Nubogu, this great man is 83 84 do you know one time daddy traveled down to koinonia just to come and be four years old what is this man coming to do when he can follow online and not that it was any special program and i looked at this man and i said at this age relationships relationships are investments if you tell me today that is not feeling fine or something is wrong I can cancel a meeting to come and honor him for his health. And don't say, ah, it's unfair. No, don't demand a level of my attention in a relationship you have not invested in. You see, oh dear. There are many people who are demanding, it is fraud to demand a return. From a, you can't put one naira and want one million. No. There are people that have not made any meaningful investment and contributions in their lives 
it will be unfair for me to demand certain levels of their time their resources their attention i have not made that kind of investment in their lives you can't give god 10 minutes and want a global ministry that 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 is unfair are we together now your pastor sometimes he travels down and we just come and worship and share fellowship and he leaves and i'm saying my god look at this there are things that people do in my life that make me become indebted to them there are times that people say oh apostle you've been we are trying to call you we cannot get you but so 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 person said they called and you answered i apologize it's not injustice it's called returns on investment are we together now as a man of god while everybody is trying to look for you for anointing somebody is asking have you eaten are you okay is god helping you when that person is crying will you keep quiet if your business has not blessed anybody you didn't raise anybody yesterday reverend was talking about the dear woman of god who helped him and all the things that she did you can imagine if for any reason she needs help reverend would get up and say once it is within my power i will go all the way listen life is hard for many people because they have not received the gift of men you have not seen men as a gift are we together if you understand this there are heights somebody met me and he made a statement he said apostle you are a very strange man he said some of the biggest women conferences in this nation you are a man and then you are going there to go and speak to women invited by the highest authorities and i looked at them said well go and ask god but one thing you can know that the women who invite me are not stupid hallelujah i don't say that to brag but isn't that strange what god can do every time you see unusual results i can tell you among the many dynamics is the ministry of men the ministry of men the ministry of men some of you there is nobody in your life today right now who can give you money i don't mean alone you can just say look um i i think i need i need to sort out something you are in trouble you are alone except god shows you mercy it is dangerous you are living in a risk are we together who loves you right now enough to say over my dead body to see this person cry have you impacted somebody's life that much for you to mean so much to them but today even if they go to be with the lord they will go rejoicing because the investments they have made in men has secured the destiny of their children to the third and to the fourth generation there are many people who will tell you what are you doing i'm in real estate what are you doing manufacturing what are you doing importation and export what are you doing maintaining relationships that is my stream of income not i'm not talking about myself alone it will take a foolish person to laugh at you and say ah you mean you are you kidding me that is an investment that does not fail it never fails because you get wealthier from capital appreciation as the person rises he will bless you to honor his perception of your relationship is someone learning now because there are many of you who can destroy men because of your products it does not matter I will push anybody it is my business you are about to crash land it takes the ministry of men when you see me honor the fathers when you see me love the people it's not from a selfish standpoint i love them sincerely but i know one recommendation from a man who loves you can open the next 10 years of your life and then one word of caution from a man of influence who has a problem with you can close a door that was once open some of you there are doors that are closed right now it's not demons that close them they were closed by men someone said be careful and that's it 
20 ministrations closed because one person said be careful i can't vouch for him that's it you were in the process of a contract and they said listen five billion is involved here do you trust these people i said well i trust these two i can't speak for this and that's it by the next day you wake up after dancing and they tell you it will not work the problem was not your skill the problem was not your value the problem was that you ignored the ministry of men unbelievers understand what i'm teaching you unbelievers have mastered the art of building ladders through relationships you would hear me say it in my teachings that a man would travel from america to nigeria to attend the birthday ceremony of a ceo's daughter who is two years old is she his friend please have you not seen people travel to attend weddings of certain people you know a man who is busy so busy he flew from australia america to attend a a, a birthday a, a wedding ceremony of a little girl or a little boy it's more than that they are registering their investments i had the opportunity to pray one time for one of the governors when he became a governor you know the the thanksgiving service i was there to preach somewhere and then it happened that it was his thanksgiving service and i saw people who would never have come to church never not even near the gates of church they were there i said what are these people doing here christians muslims known herbalists known traditionalists i mean people were there and i said you see everybody understands this except the church that is the reason why we remain down lot if you are a righteous man and you are in the midst of unrighteous men you are still not safe your personal righteousness may not deliver you from sodom and gomorrah you will need abraham to come and help you are we together my charge for you therefore is you as you take inventory of the various things that you have begin to ask yourself how many useful relationships have i invested in in my life today that can provide a leverage some of you are in this church right now if you cry there is nobody who can answer because your attitude and your disposition towards men once people are not rich you don't have any business with them you continue that way you'll be in trouble i wish i had the time i would have taught you the culture of dealing with relationships it is a principle I have mastered in my life. It is not all about anointing. Valuable relationships. Two keys to maintaining relationships. Number one is honor. Honor is the discerning, the celebrating and the appreciating of men for their uniqueness. You cannot be able to maintain quality relationships that translate into an excelling life until you understand honor let me give you one last one number two the second key that you need to be able to maintain relationships is your value and your contribution no relationship will be committed to you indefinitely if you are not adding to it most of us are very parasitic in our relationships you only expect people to do things for you the moment you come you say i'm looking at you you've not done anything for me no nobody remembers those who take we only remember people who give edge the memory of your presence in the life of people by contributing whether it is your value your prayer there's a group of women who pray for me all the time i will never forget them no matter how busy i am because i love them but because of the depth of their contribution to my life i can't forget them i remember the people who have added and continue to add to my life there's no guarantee that i will remember everybody even in a church like this you will find out that sometimes men of god seem to tilt towards others than others it's not it's not being unfair they are tilting towards the area that provides them value if i know that you are valuable you are useful to my life as far as supporting what i represent is concerned i will place priority upon you one prayer father grant me the grace to receive the gift of men into my life to see men as an answered prayer 
not as a load go ahead and pray grant me the grace to receive the gift of men the Lord helps us by bringing to our lives the gift of men relationships are powerful they are irrefutable without men there is no business without men there is no ministry without men there is no rising in all your learning learn men in all your getting get men in all your investing invest in men in all your receiving receive the ministry of men in all your praying pray for men Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin